Okay, pleurisy or pleuritis. Um, you can use those terms interchangeably whenever talking about this inflammatory um, disorder. Um, it's an acute, uh, an acute inflammation of your parietal and visceral pleura that surrounds your lungs. The pleura becomes really thick and inflamed and swollen, and you get a lot of exudate or like pus that forms between those layers. Eventually, the pleura becomes really rigid, um, and then whenever you breathe in deep, um, those really rigid pleura rub together and it creates such a sharp stabbing pain for that patient. Usually it's a consequence of some other kind of condition. It typically doesn't occur on its own. So if a patient has a history of pneumonia or tuberculosis or lung cancer or a cardiac or renal disease, um, or it could be some other kind of systemic infection or a pulmonary embolism, you might start seeing the signs and symptoms that come along with pleurisy. And what you're going to see is really shallow respirations with extreme pain. So what you're gonna see really is those patients going, oh, 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 like that kind of thing, right? Where it just hurts so bad every time they breathe and they'll be like, oh, like grimacing and oh, like really complaining about every respiration that they have. You also might start noticing a dry cough, um, probably some fatigue because of the decreased respirations, um, some dyspnea and trouble with breathing um, altogether. And then you also might be able to hear a friction rub, which if you remember that from cardiac, it sounds kind of like pleather. And that's from these two really rigid pieces of pleura that are rubbing together, um, causing a lot of pain. And it disappears whenever there's some kind of fluid accumulation between them, but typically you're going to you're gonna hear that. Um, the diagnostic test we do to see it, um, if this indeed is what is happening in your patients, um, they'll get a chest x-ray and a sputum culture, and then probably even do a thoracentesis. The thoracentesis is where they go in with a needle and they drain out fluid, and then they can send that fluid off for analysis and see if it's inflamed with some kind of infection or something. To treat it, and we just want to figure out what the underlying cause is and treat that. We can also give them some pain medication, oh please give them pain medication, and fever medicine just to help decrease the inflammatory process. As a nurse, we really want to make sure that we're giving them heat and cold packs just to reduce their discomfort as much as possible. And we'll put those directly on their chest and typically on their back will really help to soothe. Um, we want to splint their chest with a pillow, um, especially whenever they're coughing or sneezing, but some people like to do that even when they're just taking deep breaths. Um, we want to teach them to lie on their affected side because that puts pressure there and it keeps it from really rubbing against each other. Um, it, and it also just keep, helps them with straining and coughing as well. Um, offer as much emotional support as you can because they are going to be pretty uncomfortable. Okay, a pleural effusion. Um, the best way I can explain plur pleural effusions is by showing you this picture. It's a fluid accumulation that's in between the parietal and visceral pleura, and you have tons and tons of fluid there. Now, if you can think about what happens is that once that fluid accumulates, it's putting pressure on the lungs. It can eventually cause atelectasis, which is lung collapse or the destruction of those alveoli. Um, it's the same concept as whenever you had cardiac tamponade where it was that inappropriate amount of fluid that formed um, in the pericardium that put pressure on the heart and eventually caused heart failure. Well, this can eventually cause respiratory failure. Um, it's usually approximately 5 to 15 uh, milliliters of fluid that accumulates there, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's enough to really put enough pressure on the lungs to cause a lot of damage. It's typically a complication that falls, follows um, pneumonia, tuberculosis, some kind of embolism, or congestive heart failure. What you're going to see um, in the patient is a fever, some pain, dyspnea, dullness with chest PT. Like when you're cupping um, and doing the chest PT on your patient, it's not going to have that good hollow sound. It's going to be really dull. Um, you're also going to notice some diminished breath sounds whenever you listen, especially over that area. To diagnose it, we'll get a chest x-ray and a CT scan, and we'll be able to see um, the fluid accumulation there. To treat it, we want to figure out what caused it. We're probably going to be giving them some antibiotics because anytime you have fluid settling anywhere, infection can be present. Give them some pain medication. Um, we probably also want to give them some cardiotonic drugs just to help control congestive heart failure, especially if that's what's caused it. We probably will end up doing a thoracentesis, which is where they put a chest tube in and they drain out the fluid. Um, it can be left in place if we're expecting um, more fluid to accumulate, or they can go ahead and take it out. It really just depends on the doctor's judgment. Um, all right, um, let's take a break and I'll come back in a minute and talk about some other stuff.